Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Sunday in the Man Shed with Mac. Well, I've got to be honest, I'm glad that this past week has come and gone. It was a struggle at work right from Monday to Friday at 4 o'clock. Nothing but problems, personnel problems, you name it, problems. And everyone makes mistakes, uh, you know, I make mistakes every day, but fortunately I've got 30 people running around making mistakes for me too, so sometimes it gets you down. <laughs> and this was one of those weeks where it definitely got me down. Like every single day there was some catastrophe of some sort. So, Monday, tomorrow's Monday. Hopefully it's going to be better. We shall see. A little bit tired uh, Sunday evening. A little bit tired. I got some sun today and that's not necessarily the best thing for me. Um, I've got two skin colors, white and red. There's just nothing else. All my life I wanted a suntan and uh, never got one. So I just got to be careful too in the sun. I've had skin cancer once too and I don't recommend that either. So we finally got some hot weather so usually every year you need a little bit of a sunburn to remind you to put the sunscreen on and just be careful. So also the draw closed, my 2k giveaway draw has closed. So I'm going to start working on that tomorrow. I'll get all the people that emailed me and entered it, get all their names entered on the list and then I'll make the draw. Hoping to have that done by maybe Wednesday, something like that. Uh, I didn't have a huge amount of people enter it, it's probably less than 50. I was disappointed that way, but I thought uh, 2,000 subscribers have a few more people enter it, but whatever. Uh, if you entered it, improves your odds. So what else did I get up to on the weekend? Well, actually I did a video, I went grad sailing on Saturday. So I did a video of some of the uh, hauls that I got. So here's a little clip of uh, before I went to the sales. Okay, I'm on the grad sail trail again this morning. Just spent the last hour and a half walking around in this gated community. Uh, this place is huge, there's hundreds of houses in it now. I haven't been in here for a few years and it's uh, it's probably tripled in size since the last time I was here. It starts way down there and it just keeps going all the way down to the past the end there where the you can see. So I put on a few miles in there this morning. It's a beautiful day for a walk. Uh, definitely needed the exercise so it's a win-win. And I got a few little treasures as well. So now I'm going to head into another town north of here, about 20 minutes north of here. They're kind of having some neighborhood grad sales in a subdivision. It's actually a pretty nice subdivision. So I'm going to go check that out. It's still early. It's about 9.30. See what develops. Okay, so this neighborhood was kind of a bust. I got a couple of things down in this uh, development here, but this is the main subdivision up on the hill here. There's a few up there, but they're just crap, so. But you never know. If you don't go, you never know. So I'm going to head home now. There, I think there might be one more I can hit on the way home. See what happens. I gave you community one. was a pretty good one, and it was good for me, too. I put on a few steps in there, walking around. Definitely need the steps. I'm <laughs> trying to reduce the bulk. I'm under uh, 250 now, so it's going to be a long struggle. But it's got to be a combination of exercise, diet, and just adjusting your lifestyle. Which, you know, it's hard for me when you're setting your ways, but you know, you got to do it because, you know, as you get older, it's important. I think, personally, I think, anyways, it's important to be more active. Just so you can enjoy your later years in life. You don't want to be. See, some people can hardly drag themselves around. They're, they're overweight and they've got joint problems and things like that. So, you got to make a conscious effort now to try and get back into some kind of shape so I can increase my longevity. So, I had a, such a good time there at those grad sales on Saturday, I decided to go to a flea market in a town south of me on today, Sunday. 
So I loaded up Brahmi the Wonder Dog and we went down there and toured around. So Brownie was excited to go down there. He loves truck rides and he, he likes walking around meeting new people. So this is just uh, on our way when we headed down. Okay, so I'm just going to go to a flea market today. It's so I thought, well, I'll do whatever I want. So I got Brownie the Wonder Dog with me. Brownie, say hello. <laughs> So he's come along for a ride. He loves truck rides, car rides. So it's gonna head south to this flea market, right, Brownie? Yes, sir. Right on, Brownie. <laughs> About a half an hour drive. So beautiful day for a drive. We'll see you when we get there. So I wasn't disappointed at the flea market. I made some scores there. So of course, another ball peen hammer. This is number three for the weekend. So I paid two bucks for this one. The handle's a little rough on it, just needs a little bit of a sanding and uh, the varnish and it, uh, it's a little bit rusty here, so just need to touch that up a bit. It'll be good as new. And people have asked me how many ball peen hammers I have. This is about 50-ish now, so not sure how many is too many, but I haven't got there yet. And the other cool thing I got is this uh, bug sprayer. This is made by, uh, I didn't even look at the bottom before. This is made by the D.B. Smith & Company Blizzard Continuous Sprayer, Utica, New York, USA. So it doesn't have any uh, pressure inside it. There's, I haven't taken it apart, but I'm pretty sure there's like a little leather uh, washer goes around the piston. That's what lets it build pressure. So that's probably dried up or decayed over the years, but this is definitely a cool looking thing. Just love this kind of, uh, I don't know what you call it, retro. <laughs> but any bug sprayer you'd buy today is plastic and if it lasts one year, you'd be extremely lucky. I'd say this guy's probably from the 40s or 50s, and it's still in excellent shape. Got some fortunate part now. Manufacturers have realized there's no money in making things that last 50 or 60 years. So that's a, a pretty cool piece, I think. Then I got this vise too. Uh, as soon as I saw it, I was all excited. I thought it was a baby Wilton there. It looked like a Wilton vise. But it's actually a York vise. I'm not familiar with the, uh, the York brand, but it's definitely kind of a Wilton copy. And it it's really works good. Moves back and forth freely, doesn't bind up. Yeah, the jaws maybe are a little rough on it, but you can always make those yourself, or you can buy them off uh, Amazon, whatever, they're, they're easy to get. Or just leave it the way it is. So the guy wanted 35 bucks for this vise, uh, and I paid $8 for the bug sprayer. So I had the bug sprayer in my hand when I went over to buy the vise, and he wanted to trade me the vise for the bug sprayer. So I said, no, I've got to have both of them. So actually I got the vise for 25 bucks. And it's actually a machinist vise too, or a mechanics vise. You can loosen these up and it'll swivel. So he's a good little guy. Again, definitely well made. And this is the final thing I picked up was this Bugatti. I don't know if it's a poster or an ad, some kind of advertising. Se una bagada, non si passa. So anybody out there speaks Italian, just let me know what that means. But I think it's something along the lines of nothing passes a Bugatti, something like that. So I don't know how old this actually is, but it's definitely in an old frame. The woman I bought it from wasn't sure on the age or anything, but it's really cool. I'm going to hang this up in the man cave somewhere. So I just, I love this kind of old advertising stuff, old posters. So I paid 20 bucks for this. I think that's actually a pretty good deal. I might see if I can uh, find something on the internet that says how old it is, but I think they still make Bugattis, or yeah, I'm pretty sure they do. But 
So I thought that was pretty neat. So that's all the grab sale treasures. Alright, so every Sunday in the man cave, it also means it's beer time. So I know what some of you are going to say, well, Mac, how are you ever going to lose weight if you keep drinking beer? Well, I've got to moderate the beer. You can't just quit drinking beer. That's just not acceptable. So I just have to drink less beer. So this is, uh, this will be number two today. So that's pretty good. So anyway, so beer we've got today. Le Fay, I think that's how you pronounce it. This is another Belgian beer. So I'm going to give the Belgians another chance. Uh, the Belgians are bat batting about 50-50. Got some good Belgian beers and some real lousy Belgian beers. So this is Le Fay Blonde, the authentic Belgian Abbey beer. Enjoy this delicious Le Fay Blonde with its well-rounded, full-bodied taste. And this is, uh, they say this is a strong beer. ABV comes in at 6.6. .6. So not really strong, mid-strong. 12 is about, that's strong. So, what else do we know about this? I guess that's about it. Sweet taste with a hint of vanilla and cloves. Okay, well let's just see if that proves to be true. Definitely not fermented in the bottle, though. Well, she's foaming up pretty good. Actually, too, this is a small bottle, so that's moderation, small bottle. For a minute, well, that's got some uh, serious head on it. Mm, yeah, it's got a bit of a hoppy smell to it. So I'm not really picking up any vanilla or cloves. I really don't know why you would because they're <laughs> definitely not in this beer. That's not bad though. It's like some of those other Belgian beers I've had though. It's got kind of a, a little bit of a sour finish to it. It's not like overwhelmingly sour, but it's just a little tinge of sourness, bitterness at the end. exactly how I describe that that taste. I definitely wouldn't describe it as vanilla or cloves though, but yeah, like I say, other than a bit of a, a lingering finish to it, it's not bad. a lot of these Belgian uh, style beers they you do get a lot of foaming on them so I guess that's kind of I don't it's something to do with the process this is definitely not a fermented in the bottle of beer though it's nice and clear dark well, not dark amber but medium dark amber I'm okay with this one. I don't know as I would probably would buy it again. It's not overwhelmingly good, but there's nothing wrong with it. So 
So I'm not as disappointed with this Belgian beer as I have been with other ones. So I think probably that'll be it for Belgian beers for a while. I have to find something new for next week. Not sure what. Actually, some of our craft beer uh, craft breweries here in BC are putting out their summer beers now. So might try some of those. No problem with those. Though they're local to this area, so if somebody sees it across the country or somewhere in the U.S., good chance they won't be able to buy it. So that's why I just try to focus on the ones that I think that are readily available in North America and Europe. But anyways, I'm going to finish up this so-so uh, Belgian beer. <laughs> and I hope everyone has a good week. And as always, cheers.